All right, humans, we got another video for you guys today. This one's gonna be called Dare, the new way to end anxiety, okay? And I'm gonna go over three of the main points in this book. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of points in this book. We're gonna talk about the three biggest takeaways for me and what you guys can implement into your life immediately. These are very practical things that you can implement immediately into your life, okay? So number one, let's see if you guys can see this. Let me step back. Okay, number one, accept and embrace the feeling of anxiety. Welcome it inside your body, okay? Now, how many of you guys have heard the, the, the phrase letting go? I talk about that. You may have heard it in other places, let go. And this is the best way to end anxiety, okay? Is when you completely let go go and when i say let go i mean to detach from it emotionally just completely realize that separation okay but now here we're talking about letting go actually means a better way of saying letting go is accepting and embracing okay and this could go for any feeling. It doesn't have to necessarily be anxiety. This could be anything. You can embrace that feeling and accept it into your body. Welcome it inside as if you're best friends with this feeling. Okay. Now, some of you guys might be thinking like that, that kind of sounds a little bit ridiculous. Like, why would I want to accept and embrace anxiety? It's a bad feeling. Okay. But think about it like, like for example, if you were living in like an alternate uh, reality, like a different universe, and instead of happiness being the goal, um, let's say anxiety was the goal. Anytime you felt anxiety, like that was, you know, what you're like, that, that, that's what makes you supposed to feel good. Okay. And just imagine yourself feeling the anxiety. And as soon as it comes, you're so happy. You're like, oh yes, I feel the anxiety. I'm so happy. Right? You're so happy that the anxiety is here because that's the goal, to feel the anxiety. And the anxiety comes and you're feeling thrilled about it. Okay, What do you think is going to happen? Because when you're happy about the anxiety feeling coming around, that means essentially that you're accepting and embracing the feeling. You're, you're like trying to hold on to it. You're like, oh, this is a great feeling. I love this. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to slowly dissolve. Why? Because anxiety uh, is at its strongest when you are resisting it. Okay. So when that anxious feeling comes up, most of us do the exact opposite of accepting and embracing it. What we do is we basically try to get rid of it. We're, 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 we're trying to resist it. And that resistance, we're like, oh, this anxiety feeling is here. Like, I want to get rid of it. And this resistance, right, the fact that we want to get rid of it is what makes it even worse. It, it makes it even worse. It persists even more when you're actually trying to get rid of the feeling. You're actively trying to get rid of it, okay? So you don't want to do that. You don't want to be scared of your anxiety. You don't want to dread it. You're like, oh, the anxiety is here and you're feeling bad about it. You don't want to do that at all, okay, at all. You don't want to do that at all. The only thing you want to do is when you feel that anxiety, accept it, embrace it, and welcome it into your body. Really try this. Really just the next time you're feeling anxious, go lay down on a bed and try to feel more of it. It talks about this in the book too where try to amplify that feeling of anxiety. Try to feel even more if you can, as much as possible. You know, sit down with yourself, no distractions, no phone, no nothing. Just lay in bed, stare at the sky and just be with that feeling. Just feel it in your body and just accept and embrace it. Just be grateful that that feeling of anxiety is there. I know it sounds ridiculous. A lot of people are like, this sounds insane, but I promise you, try this out. Okay, try this out and, and not with the mindset of, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, at the end of this, I'm going to get rid of my anxiety. Um, essentially what you're, what you're doing is you're letting, you're letting go, which is the equivalent of accepting and embracing. And when you do this, when you accept and embrace, what happens is that, uh, you, you let the energy, you know, 
dissolve into your body. You're not resisting it anymore. So it kind of just, it kind of just floats in your body. And then eventually it just, maybe even when you're least expecting it, it might, it might go away. But the mindset is not to get rid of, because when you're trying to get rid of, you're resisting. You're like, I don't want this feeling. Accepting and embracing is saying, I'm going to hang on to this feeling and I'm happy it's here. And I'm grateful that it's here. And I want to stay with it. And I want to welcome it inside my body. Go in it with that mindset and watch how everything changes. Number two, fear is an acronym. It means feeling excited and ready. Okay. When you feel fear, okay, when you resist it, what happens is it manifests into fear, what we call fear. It's like this feeling of like, I don't want to do it. Uh, it's a scary or whatever it may be. And that's fear. Okay. But if you see fear in a different kind of way, you can use it as fuel and energy. Okay. Hear me out on this one. So when I first started improv classes, I've told this story before, but I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit of how I was feeling when I first started those improv classes, okay? So I hired a, a personal public speaking coach and the coach told me, go do improv because you want to associate public speaking with having fun and having a good time. So he said, go do improv. And I was like, that was the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life. I was like, improv, that's insane. Trying to be funny in front of a class, that's absolutely insane to me. At that time, it was absolutely insane. And I was so scared. This was, this was as little as, we're talking about like four years ago, okay? I was so scared to go to an improv class. I literally, but I knew I was gonna do it. I knew I was gonna do it. I was like, I, I hired this public speaking coach. I wanna get better at public speaking. I wanna be better in front of a camera so I can make this YouTube channel, which manifested afterwards. But I was so scared, I was terrified. I was literally terrified of going even to the first class. I remember I was dreading it for literally one entire week before that first class, before I signed up for the first class. I was dreading, I couldn't sleep at night. I was thinking about it. I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be crazy. What is this, what's gonna happen in this class? Am I gonna have to speak in front of all these people? Are they gonna expect me to be funny? Am I gonna get laughed at? Like all these things started floating around in my mind. And I was really, really scared. I, I was really scared. And I remember feeling scared every single night um, for a week. I signed, I signed up a week before the class started and I, and I felt deep fear every single night, every single night. And then the class finally came and I was like, Whew. all right, so we get, we get in the class. So I made it through the first day. And I remember afterwards was this feeling of like relief. Of like, oh my God, I did it, this and that. But then that fear was still inside my body. It was, it was just like unstoppable um, because the class are every week and I was scared the entire next week. I was like, the second class is gonna be terrifying. The teacher said we're gonna do this, this and that. And I was scared during that as well. And you know, improv, it, it, it's, it, could be, it could be viewed as a scary thing. It's not a very easy thing to do, but if you treat, what I, what I learned through improv, you know, taking it for two and a half years, uh, twice a week, okay? What I learned is that when you feel that fear and you kind of buy into it and you're like resisting it, you're like, oh, I really don't wanna feel this, like blah, blah, blah. It's gonna manifest and it's gonna go bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and you're not gonna be able to stop it. You literally will not be able to stop it, okay? The only way you can stop it, and you can't really stop it, but what you can do is, so let's say we, we, we're resisting the fear. That means we're kind of like holding, pulling back with it. We're pulling back with the fear, okay? And feeling excited and be, and the acronym feeling excited and ready means that now instead of holding this fear inside of our body, we're, we're using it as energy. We're just pushing out with it, right? We're pushing out with it. We're using it as energy. We're like, using it as excitement, okay? And this is the first time I heard this concept was, was through my public speaking one-on-one uh, -on -one coach. And then I read it in a few books, including this one, where it says anxiety and excitement are basically the same feeling. But you feel anxiety when you're holding it in and you feel excitement when you're going outwards with it, when you're pushing it out and you're like, let's go, you're using it as, as, as fuel, 
okay? That's how it becomes excitement. So next time you're feeling anxious or fearful, stop trying to resist that feeling. Let it sit in your body and also just like, just use it as fuel and as energy to do exactly what you're gonna do. Like for example, like when you're watching, you know, uh, like, like when we're watching like UFC events uh, is one example. If anybody watches UFC, the fighters are very anxious or excited. See the fighters, like the, the guys that fight on TV and stuff like that, they use that uh, anxiety as excitement. They're like, because they feel that anxiety in their body, right? They're like, they feel that anxiety, but then they get out there and now they're excited. They're like, okay, let's, let's, let's push forward with this. Let, let's use this as energy, right? You can use that as energy, I promise you, because I've done it myself, okay? I've done it myself, so it's a real, real thing. Number three, laugh at some of your anxious thoughts and realize how ridiculous and irrational they are, okay? Don't take them seriously. So laugh at some of your anxious thoughts and realize how ridiculous and irrational they are. So the human brain is a very interesting thing. Our mind goes to places where, especially during like a pandemic or a lockdown, your mind might be going to places where you're just like, you don't intend for it to go. You don't want it to go there. You're thinking all types of crazy shit. And the only problem is when, when you actually listen to your mind and you believe the shit that it tells you, right? Your mind is not always right. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys on this video. Some of you guys are like, oh, I trust my mind. Everything that comes in my mind is the truth. Your mind is playing games with you sometimes. I promise you, okay? You know, you can fabricate things. You can make things worse than they are. You can make things better than they are. Your mind, the more thinking you do, the more tweaking you do with your thinking. I call it the, uh, the, uh, the replayer, like you replay certain scenarios in your mind, you're replaying, you're replaying, like, let's say there's, you maybe have a friend that you think backstabbed you and then like, you're replaying it in your mind, you're like, how could that son of a bitch, you know, blah, 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 you're just like, you're, you're getting angrier and angrier and you're making yourself, you're rattling yourself up, you know, and then you believe all these different stories your mind makes up and sometimes your mind just makes up random shit, like, oh, this, this person's out to get me or that person's out to, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that your mind will will um, will say to you, and that's it's it's simply not true. Like there's no other way to really go about it, where you're just thinking, and you know all of a sudden you cross this thought, and you're like, is this is this a true thought? Is this true about myself? Is this not true about myself? And like you can e like the mind, you can easily make yourself feel terrible with your own mind. And you can easily make yourself feel a lot better with your own mind as well, just depending on how aware you are of your thoughts. And when you have, when, when you become aware of a thought that's basically a limiting belief or something that's of a negative nature that's making you feel bad, you can consciously twist that out, okay? It's like you cut it off, like you start thinking about something and this is, this, is, this is a skill. This is something that you have to practice on. This isn't something where you watch this video and tomorrow you're gonna be an expert at this. But this is something you practice on day by day where if something negative comes in your mind, let's say something limiting, like, oh, you can't do this or you can't do that or whatever it may be, you notice it right away. You're aware of it, it comes up, you're aware of it and you're like, and then you just kind of like, you just kind of like know to yourself, you're like, hey, 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 you know, don't fuck with me. Like you just kind of like talk to your mind, like don't, don't try that, you know, don't try that. And you just kind of basically laugh at some of the negative things that your mind is feeding you. That's the whole point is you don't take them seriously. We're like, oh, I believe this, this must be true. Oh my God, I'm in hell. You can't, you can't take your own mind so seriously. You really can't. Um, because if you do, like I said, you're gonna be a slave to your mind and you're gonna be a slave to your emotions and you're gonna be a slave to whatever your mind, and, and uh, if you guys saw my other book review, The Untethered Soul, in that one I talk about, you know, how in that book it talks about the mind and you being totally separate. Think of your mind as if it's your roommate. It's one of your friends giving you advice, but you don't always listen to your roommate. If it's advice you don't wanna take or if it's advice you don't wanna believe, then shove that aside, okay? Just, just 
just shove it aside. Like, you know what? You, you, you have your own little conversation with your mind. Like, you know what? I, I, I choose not to believe that. You know, just throw that aside and keep it moving, right? Um, so you can't you can't treat your 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 thoughts and your mind as if it's the physical you. Okay, the physical you is 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 the one that's listening to what your thoughts say. So if someone's listening, let's say your physical you is listening to those thoughts, that means the thoughts are coming from somewhere else. Okay, so the thoughts are coming in. We don't have to completely believe what these thoughts are telling us. We don't have to. Okay, we don't have to do that. So that's just something to keep in mind. And this book, if you have anxiety issues or, you know, fear issues or whatever it may be, this is an excellent book to pick up and read. So go, go buy that. It's called uh, Dare, The New Way to End Anxiety. I forget the author's name off the top of my head. It's on my computer somewhere over there. But just Google it. Dare, The New Way to End Anxiety. And there's a lot of excellent things in this book. And one more thing I actually want to touch on before I end this video is... There's a portion of the book where it says subconsciously, here's the problem. Some of you guys might watch this and it's not going to change anything because here's the, here's the issue is that deep down inside, you want to feel anxious. I know that sounds crazy, but you have this belief that if I didn't feel anxious about a certain something, let's say for example, let's say for example, you've got a lot of work to do at work. You've got so much to catch up on. You know, in your mind, you have this subconscious belief if I don't feel anxious, then I won't do the work. I gotta make sure that I feel anxiety and I need to feel bad so that I can get this work done. Because if I don't feel bad, then that's not normal. That's, that's kind of the belief that some of us have, okay? But that's not true. It is completely false. I'm not gonna get way deeper into that right now because there's like a good like 15, 20 minute segment in the book that talks about that. If any of this resonated with you, um, I think you should pick up this book, you know, get it on Audible or wherever and check it out. Uh, it was a great read. And if you guys have any questions about anything or if you have any anxieties or fears or certain, a very specific thing you want to tell me and share with me and you want my advice on, then just drop it in the comments down below and like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.